we're going to look at the relationship between edit distance and finite state, finite state transducers. Um, and uh, edit distance um, can be easily represented in a finite state transducer because finite state transducers uh, are actually much more general and capture lots of other kinds of translations between strings. And so we can actually use uh, FSTs in order to capture the notion of edit distance. And what we, the way to do it is to construct an edit FST. And an edit FST basically um, maps uh, source strings to target strings, all possible source strings, all possible target strings, and gives them a cost. Each uh, edit gets a cost. A transition of uh, x, uh, a character x, um, to itself gets zero cost. Um, so that's just equality. You can uh, insert a character by having the input be an empty string and the output is a symbol x. And we want to give this uh, insertion a cost of 1. And in the same way, we have a deletion which maps an x to an empty string. And that also gets a cost of 1. And optionally, you might want to substitute a character for any other character in the alphabet between the source and the target. And if you get a cost of 2, that's the same as insertion and deletion. But if you get a cost of 1, that means you actually need a transition that maps an x to a y. And we'll see how to do that. Uh, first, we'll do the case where the cost is 2. And then we'll do the case where the cost is 1, because that's a bit more complicated. And um, in order to do this, we have to actually add a concept to FSTs as well, which is um, representing this cost. Now, the cost can either be a transition, so it costs you to take one transition. So you want to minimize the number of transitions uh, from the start state to the final state, or you can actually explicitly get a cost when you, whenever you take a transition in an FST. And we'll talk about that using an example. Now, to use this edit FST, all you have to do is compose the source um, string. And the source string is uh, just converted into an FST so that we can do composition. And that's really easy. You just take a source string, um, represent it as a finite state machine that just generates that string. And then you take the identity, which means every uh, character in the string gets mapped to itself. So that's... Uh, a simple way to construct a source FST. And in the same way, we construct a target FST. So that's a target string converted into an FST. And then we just compose the source FST, the edit FST, and the target FST. And composition just does everything for us because now it'll find the edits that will take the source string to the target string. It just using the composition algorithm. Um, and, uh, you know, We'll uh, talk a little bit about complexity uh, towards the end of this uh, section. Finding the minimum cost edit distance is just finding the shortest path. Um, so what's the minimum number of steps I need to convert the source string to the target string? And what this FST, this composed FST does is computes an error rate. So what is um, the error of um, looking at a source and then matching it to a target. Um, for words, this computes a word error rate. For letters, this is the letter error rate. So let's look at an example. Let's say we wanted to map a binary string 1010 into the target string 1110. Um, so in this case, the alphabet is just the bits 1 and 0. And I chose this uh, small alphabet for a reason. We'll talk about it. Um, so here's the source FST, just represents the source string 1010, and the target string is 1110. So nothing very interesting to see here. What is interesting is the edit FST, and that's what it looks like. And it's uh, sometimes called a flower FST, because um, I guess if you squint at it in a certain way, it looks like a flower. I don't really see it, but anyway, people say that. Um, and this is um, an edit FST because it maps source strings to target strings. For example, it uh, maps a 1 to a 1 or a 0 to a 0. And that's just equality. Um, it also inserts a 1 or inserts a 0. Um, and that's insertion. And these are the two deletion arcs.
And you can chain these together because all of these transitions are looping around um, on this state. And so you can do many, as many uh, loops around state zero as you want in order to uh, convert a source string into a target string using insertions, deletions, equality. Right, so it's fairly straightforward. And the next step, uh, oh, so the important thing to note here is that the substitution cost here will be two because you're doing, you cannot just substitute zero for one. You have to do a deletion and then an insertion or an insertion then a deletion. And the next step, just compose them together and what you get is something that looks like this. Well, looks pretty hairy, but actually it's, um, exactly analogous to the distance matrix we cons constructed. So it's giving you every possible way to edit source string to a target string. What we're interested in is in the minimum cost edit. So you can take the shortest path through this automaton, uh, this finite state transducer, and what you get is something more uh, readable and understandable. Um, so it just says you're going to edit 1010 to a target 1110, and um, you can see the cost will be one uh, deletion, another deletion, and insertion, and insertion. So that's a cost of four. So, um, so not only do you get the minimum edit distance cost, but you also get um, the alignment. So this says one aligns to one, so that's this one, goes to this one, this zero goes to epsilon, that means we erase the zero. Um, this one goes to one, so now this one can align to this one. And then you remove the zero, uh, oops, there you go. Uh, so that's removing the zero, and then you just insert the one and the zero, that's these two arcs here. Um, so it tells you not only the minimum edit distance, but also the alignment. Um, so that's really simple and straightforward way of using finite state transducers to compute edit distance. But if you want a substitu substitution cost of one instead of two, then you have to create a different looking edit FST. And that looks like this when you minimize it. Um, and in this case, it's using this new notation that you haven't seen before. Um, so this is something you're used to. 1 goes to 1, 0 goes to 0, okay, no cost. Um, but if you look at this transition here, it says a 1 goes to a 0, and this slash 1, what that means is, if you take that transition, you have to pay a cost of 1. So that's adding a cost of 1, and so every time you take that transition, you have to add 1 to your cost. Um, and this can be handled in a straightforward way in the... Um, uh, FST recognition algorithms or transduction algorithms. You just have to keep collecting the cost. And one other uh, notion is that the final state actually can have optionally a cost. So this slash one means if you finish at this state zero, that means you use it as a final state, you have to get a cost of zero. And that's uh, why you can see that this zero one doesn't have a cost on the transition but if you stop at this uh, state, you get a cost of one. Um, if you don't stop at this state and you use this transition to go back, you still pay a cost of one. So um, you can either use zero goes to zero, one goes to one, which actually is the equality, but you're paying this cost of one for this guy over here. So both of these are related to that. So it's just chaining together all of these costs. Uh, and the reason why it looks a bit funny is because I've minimized the number of states um, at the expense of a little bit of readability. Um, and it's actually easier to read this way. Uh, the other transducers look a lot, um, lot more difficult to read. But the ideas in this transducer are very simple. All you're doing is equality, substitution, or deletion. And substitution here is guaranteed to have a cost of one because every time you do it, uh, you're going to get a cost of one. It might involve going to a state and then going to another state, but it makes sure that it's a cost of one. Okay, so this is all very well. Um, it works now with the substitution cost of one. 
Um, here the equality cost is zero and insertion, deletion, and substitution of a cost of one. Um, but the problem is scaling to larger character sets. So if you have 95 symbols, then this F edit FST I just showed you with substitution cost one will have more than 9,000 transitions. And if you're doing words, let's say you have 10,000 words, you have 100 million transitions. So this is getting out of hand. And in fact, if you look at the number of transitions, it's going to be on the order of V squared uh, because you have to have a mapping from each character to every other character in order to get a cost of one. And the solution, uh, there's a clever trick to this that exploits composition, actually, and is to decompose the edit FST. Basically, factor out the uh, substitutions um, and deletions uh, and insertions in such a way that uh, you don't have to map every symbol to every other symbol. Uh, so that might seem contradictory, but it's actually fairly straightforward. So this is what we're starting with. This is the edit FST I just showed you. Uh, <clears throat> and we're going to decompose it into two FSTs. The first FST, call, we'll call it edits one. What it's doing is mapping uh, into these abstract symbols. So D and S uh, stand for deletion and substitution. So in this case, um, a zero goes to epsilon, gets to state zero here, and then it says, well, I can delete it. So essentially what this is doing is zero maps to D, and you can see zero maps to S. So what this is uh, essentially saying is zero gets converted somehow, either gets deleted or it gets substituted. And we're gonna figure that out with the second transducer. Uh, and that second transducer doesn't really need to know what this input was. It just needs to know what to do with it. Um, so that makes it a lot easier um, to deal with uh, all a large alphabet because <coughs> sorry, you can um, simply uh, take every symbol in the alphabet and give the instruction to delete or substitute and then a later transducer takes care of it. You can also give a instruction to insert something and of course Insertion could be inserting any character, so we don't need to specify which one. We don't need to say one goes to zero and zero goes to one. We just say insert something. <coughs> so these symbols I, D, and S have to be taken care of somehow. In order to do that, we have a second transducer edits two, and that does exactly that. It takes um, an insertion and a substitution and treats them together because both an insertion and substitution is going to insert some character, right? So if I get, in this case, uh, in edits one, I get zero mapped to an I. Um, sorry, in, it cannot be mapped to an I because it's uh, epsilon mapped to insertion. That means I have to insert a character. I can also get a zero mapped to S. In both cases, we are taking something, adding a character. So that's uh, what we're doing over here. An insertion and a substitution gets to state zero, and then just adds uh, a zero or one. So both of them do exactly the same thing. So we've drastically reduced the, the size of the, the number of transitions that we need to do something. And that's uh, basically factoring out all of these operations. And notice here, a D just sort of it's deleted. It's possible that you could substitute uh, in edits one, zero goes to S. In this case, S goes to zero. That's possible, but that's always going to be a longer path than just taking a zero to zero. So we don't really need to worry about it. So that actually um, is a clever way to factorize uh, a large automata, a large finite state transducer, into two smaller ones. Because this one has on the order of four V transitions, uh, edits one, edits two also has on the order of four V transitions. Edits is just a composition of edits one and edits two, and has V plus one squared minus one transitions. 